Nicole Emma did a TED Talk. It's fantastic. It's called uh, What Sex Workers Can Teach Us About Human Connection. And um, I watched it and I really loved what you talked about with how, you know, men seek um, human connection through sex. And I think it's interesting to look at some of the fundamental differences between most men and women, of course, I don't want to say all men and women because everybody's different. You know, we got non-binary people out there and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I think that one could accurately say that, you know, a lot of men find um, strong connections through sex. And sometimes it's different for a lot of women. I know for me, like a strong emotional connection, I do not find through sex. I mean, yeah, sex is great, but that's not where I find right. like my connection with my partner that connection with my partner is like through experience and conversation and you know it other kind of acts the other way of yeah for like, us the more we are connected that way yes and the sex tends to be better yes so really interesting so yeah talk a little bit about um about your your view in that in that subject because i i just thought it was so interesting yeah i think i think as a general um again men are you know by and large conditioned that you know their worth here comes from um i think the the zinger from the TED talk was muscles, money, and mojo, right? Their, mm -hmm. um, physical strength, their, their money and financial resources or their, you know, sexual virility. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so they tend to kind of express themselves or be more, um, obvious or forward in one of those areas as a way to try to fit the stereotype of what men ought to be, you yeah. know? And so they get, over sexualized sometimes or over obsessed with money or over um, gym obsessed or something. Not that that's any of those, having a lot of those things is necessarily unhealthy, but I think a lot of times the why, you yes. know, is a bad driver. Um, and at the, on the same note, they're also not taught that, that it's okay to have emotions, most emotions, right? You can be angry, um, but not cry. Um, and a lot of men's emotional support doesn't come from their platonic friends. You know, guys aren't taught that it's okay to watch a movie and like cuddle on the couch like we can. We can mm -hmm. tickle each other's backs and watch a movie and cuddle or something. And, um, you know, talk to our girlfriends about things and cry and have that support and men don't. So they find their partner and um, then they feel like that's their only so support of their, you know, emotional health and well-being. And a lot of times the sex is attached to that, that because we will have sex with them and that means they're worthy. Mm -hmm. But if we stop, then all of a sudden either we're denying them something they're due or they're no longer worthy of it. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes this battle. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, so often you see people married, you know, couples who are married for a long time like the guy wants more sex and like the woman has lost interest and and you know that's just such a common theme is is this mismatched kind of connection um sexually with each other and um i really loved how you know you kind of referred back to these like basic things that we tell boys from when they're a young age like man up don't be a sissy um take it like a man that kind of stuff. We really don't encourage vulnerability in men at all. And so there's no outlet for those feelings for a lot of men. And you're right, like, you know, men can't be vulnerable with each other as, as friends, whereas we women are, are often vulnerable with each other as friends. And so it's, um, it's a really unfortunate, you know, place that we kind of pigeonhole men in and how we define masculinity. And it's something that we've, we've talked about on the show so many times. So in in that idea you kind of talk about the services that sex workers can provide for men so can you tell us a little bit about that like how are sex workers helpful to men who are having a hard time being vulnerable um feeling connected with other people well i think a lot of times we're looking for more than sex i mean some obviously there's a lot of people looking for sex there are um but a lot of times we're looking for somewhere to be vulnerable, someone to, someone that likes us, somewhere to feel important, um, enjoyed, friendly, you know, there's not a lot of other baggage and other things. And I think 
by and large, all of us need that regardless of, of gender, um, to have some place where we feel like somebody likes us. And I think unfortunately with, with men not having a lot of other support systems, when they have a, either they're single or they don't have sex in their relationship or they don't have other things or a connection, you know, with their partner or something, they don't have anywhere really to be, um, close to somebody. And, and I just, I feel like it's a service, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a way of providing somebody something they need. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, am running a a marathon a week, you know, the week after I'm sore every day, I'm gonna go get a massage. What's the difference? Like, you know, I said in there paying somebody to do your taxes or detail your car, you know, and somebody's like, well, we're not cars and we're not, you know, but our needs are, we can go to a counselor. If I'm stressed or overwhelmed, I can go talk it out and get my emotional needs met. Um, you know, sexually, what's different? Like, why can't we pay somebody that, for that? Yeah, that's an interesting comparison that you make because because it's true. Because one can say, oh well, you know, like you. Sh- it's this idea that you should only have sex with people if there is some kind of deep connection there, or you're in a committed relationship, or there's something like beyond just the physicalities of sex. Um, and 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 the th- I think another thing that we need to keep in mind is that sex workers are professionals. They're very good at their jobs, right? Like that's why they get hired to do what they do. It's the difference between, you know, maybe having casual sex with a friend or something like that, or, you know, a one night stand um, versus seeing a sex worker. You could compare it to, you know, having a chat with your friend about some, you know, Problem at, problems that you're going through versus seeing a therapist, somebody who's a professional and knows how to kind of deal with and help you unpack all of these feelings. And I think you could really look at, at sex workers in that way. Like, sure, you don't have to see a sex worker. You could just have casual sex with random people. That's fine. But, you know, sex workers are professional. And a lot of them take uh, real measures to be clean and safe and to use protection. And I think that if you go back and watch a lot of my episodes with uh, full service sex workers, I think that you as a viewer, if you've not watched them, really help you kind of change your mind about how you see um, full service sex workers. A great example is Alice Little, who works at the Bunny Ranch. And it's so interesting because she talks about the work that she does with virgins. And she talks about how she works with a lot of um, men who are on the spectrum. And Just how, those things up too. yeah, exactly. and, and like the understanding between like how an autistic person might need to be touched differently than like a regular person and how you can enter into that without shame, without judgment and with the knowledge of these like sp- specific needs that need to be met and these boundaries that these people need to have and how you can explain this in a very thorough, clear way to somebody before you engage in the act rather than that. I mean, awkward conversation with someone that you just met at a bar. Like, so by the way, this, you know what I mean? Like communication is, is not a great, is usually not like wonderful between, um, you know, casual sex partners, even like long-term sex partners. But if anything I've learned, sex workers are like really great at communication. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.